sorry, Ryan, I'm going to share over you just as we get started here. Oh, no, <laughs> um, problem, sorry. no, you're fine. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Tyler. I am the facilitator for this afternoon's session, and we have a great group of uh, uh, colleges and presenters here for you this evening. So thank you for joining us. Um, a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. So um, you, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us though. If for some reason you can't, just send us a message using that Q&A button and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Speaking of the Q&A button, that is your best way to engage with our presenters this afternoon. So as you have questions throughout the session, drop those in the Q&A box. Um, our presenters will be monitoring those throughout the entire session and are happy to answer those. So feel free to drop those questions in starting now. You can ask them while they're presenting or while or after they have finished presenting as well. And they would be happy to answer those throughout the entire session. Um, this is just one of many sessions uh, happening. So be sure to check the Strive Scan website, sign up for any additional sessions you might be interested in. And then this session recording will be available within about a week uh, as well on that same website where you registered. So before I turn it over to our first presenter, I wanted to show you what our schedule looks like for tonight. So we will be hearing from six colleges. Um, first, we'll hear from Lynn University, then we'll move to Texas Christian University, Park University, Savannah College of Art and Design, Heston College, and then Penn State University. And so with that, I will turn it over to Ryan with Lynn University. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Um, so I'm gonna go through a little bit about Lynn University. Um, we are a small private university in Boca Raton, Florida. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. One second, my is a little delayed. There we go. So again, my name is Ryan Koss. I am the admission counselor at Lynn University. We are located in Boca Raton, Florida, which is in the South Florida area. We are a little over 30 minutes away from the city of Fort Lauderdale, about an hour away from the city of Miami on the Atlantic coast side. We're three miles from our closest beach, so very much a coastal kind of town, um, year-round weather, what we do down in South Florida, as many people have probably been checking in, especially in the last week with the way weather has been around the country. Um, part of our area brings a lot of diversity, and you'll see that through our campus. Um, in the bottom corner there, you'll see a little bit about just our international diversity, the amount of people that we have coming to the local area, it really makes a unique opportunity for you to learn in a globalized uh, classroom um, and really become a, a global educated student with our uh, campus community. Going into that again, so last year our incoming class was a little over 830 students. Um, so again, small private, but we had about 97 different countries represented. Um, that picture that you see on the right is actually the entrance to our campus. Each flag represents um, one of the different countries that our students are coming from. We have students from all over the, the country domestically. Um, about 75% of our students coming from outside of the state of Florida, which makes it very residential, very friendly for you to be on the campus, seeing people all the time, um, and during times like this, even to come visit campus. Um, we were one of the, the schools that opened up in August. We had our students come back, um, and we had no problems at all, thankfully. So we are looking forward to getting through the rain, remainder of our semester and having students come in again in this upcoming fall semester. Lynn does things a little differently. So we are um, absolutely uh, in, entwined with our um, innovation and technology and we incorporate that into the classroom. Each incoming student will receive a, a brand new iPad Pro, the iPencil and the keyboard. And you use that for any and all of your programs. Um, most of your textbooks are downloadable directly from our Lynn library um, and customized by your professors. So they're completely free. You download them onto your iPad. You can circle, highlight, write your notes right on there. And we use multiple different apps um, that we have the licenses for. Um, that are pre-downloaded onto the iPad for you. So it's yours, it's already built into your tuition, it saves you the money with the textbooks, and when you graduate, you take it with you, um, and you get to really, again, customize the way you're learning through this, um, because we're bringing the technology that you're already using and just using the concepts that we're trying to teach you. Program-wise, we have six main colleges that house our programs. We have our own College of Aeronautics for any of our aviation interested students. We have our College of Art and Sciences for our forensics investigations, criminal justice, psychology, um, musical theater and acting. We have our College of Business, which is very big with us, especially things like entrepreneurship, um, business management, uh, hospitality management. And we have our College of Communication Design for our graphic art and design, game design, animation students. We have our College of Education and we have a classical trained music conservatory for any of our musical performance students. 
One of the nice things with our university is that any of our programs with exception of the fine art degrees can be done in three years. You would come in as a traditional freshman in your first year at the end of that semester or at the end of the two semesters, as long as you have a 3.0 GPA, we will invite you to finish in the last two years. So you will finish essentially at the end of your junior year with your full degree. Many students choose to stay your fourth year and complete their masters. So you would finish both degrees in the same time that your friends would be finishing their, their four year bachelor's degree. So a lot of unique opportunities. When you have a chance, go down to that link, the lynn.edu slash academics to see the different curricula breakdown. We have three year and four year samples for your schedules. You can get a sense of what the classes are gonna be like and what types of programs you'd be able to go into. Um, savings wise, obviously you save what you'd be spending in your senior year. So a big plus on that side, giving you really the best bang for your buck when you're looking at universities. Jobs and internship wise. So even though we're a small school, I think there's a really common misconception with being a small school, you don't have the same opportunities and that's hundred percent untrue. Um, these are all different organizations that we currently have uh, recent alumni and, and um, students interning with. So you can be a big fish at a, in a small pond with a university like ours versus being lost among you know, thousands in other places. So being able to capitalize on some of these opportunities, not only locally, but nationally and internationally are, are tremendous help when you're looking at going into your career, building up your resume and really getting that real world experience that you're looking for. We usually hold three job and internship fairs on campus. We require that you have an internship completed by the time you graduate. So again, trying to get you prepared so once you get your degree, you will already have something lined up by the time you are going into the work field or into your career. As far as our application, so we are an, on the common application and we have our own Lynn University application. You can apply as early action or regular decision. You see our dates and our deadlines there. Um, we are test optional university. We've been test optional for about seven years now um, and will continue being, especially the way things have been in the last year. We will require your, um, your personal statement about any topic that you would like to tell us. And then we require at least one letter recommendation. Everything else in your application, I always recommend to just tell us something that we can't see through your transcript. So tell us something unique about you, what you like to do. Um, if you babysit your younger siblings, things that take your time away from being in class um, really helps us learn more about you as an individual person and helps us find the fit and make sure that you're going to be happy when you're at Lynn and that you're also going to be able to contribute to our own community. And last couple slides for me. So we're D2 as far as sports. Um, so D2 athletic teams, um, our football team is undefeated because we don't have one. So if you're looking at our D2 sports, go follow us and you can reach out to me if you have any other questions. This is my contact information here. So thank you for joining us. We hope to see you on campus soon. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, next up we are going to Texas Christian University with Ray. All right, so with that being said, uh, thank you so much for starting us off. Um, you want a second? All right, awesome. So with that being said, um, first and foremost, we'd like to thank you all so much for being here with us today. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Ray Person, and I'm an assistant director of first year admission um, at Texas Christian University, which is located in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm actually joined um, today with, uh, by my awesome colleague, um, Mandy Castro, who's actually our director of admission. So if you do have any questions throughout uh, the course of this, uh, of this presentation, um, Mandy will definitely be more than happy to answer any of your questions um, via chat. So with that being said, you know, we always like to start out with our mission statement um, here at TCU, which is to educate individuals to think and act as ethical leaders and responsible citizens in the global community. So ladies and gentlemen, we understand that you're trying to find a place uh, to call home for the next four years. We also too understand that you're trying to find a place that actually houses your major as well. But when I work with my uh, potentially future horn frogs, I always encourage for them to think with the, uh, begin with the ending in mind. And what does that basically translate into? So let's think about where we are today. Um, we're basically trying to navigate a pandemic um, here in Texas, um, um, and also too in some other states, we're dealing with a lot of uh, different increment weather um, as well. 
Um, and then also too, we've been challenged in a lot of different ways to be able to find ways to stay connected uh, throughout this pandemic. So here at TCU for us, we're really trying to build you into those uh, analytical and criti critical thinkers who are gonna be our future leaders of tomorrow. So with all of that and said, um, you know, definitely keep that in mind as you're considering, you know, um, visiting and becoming a part of the TCU Horn Frog family. All right. So with all that being said, um, I like to actually start out just to provide you with some background information about TCU. We were actually founded in 1873 by two brothers who were prime ministers who were associated with the Disciples of Christ Church. Today, TCU is actually still associated with the Disciples of Christ Church. However, we actually have over 60 different faiths represented on our campus with the largest denomination actually being Roman Catholic. But know that your religious journey can be as small or as robust as you would like for it to be. And there are no religious requirements as it relates to attending TCU. We actually only require for our students to take at least one religious course as a part of their um, core curriculum. But beyond the scope of that, um, know that the uh, possibilities are endless. You know, we have over 25 plus different student-led religious organizations. In addition to that, we have an entire office dedicated to um, religious and spiritual life. And then also, too, we see our students get connected um, in the Fort Worth community um, as well with some of our local churches. So let's talk about TCU as it relates to the sheer numbers. So when I describe TCU um, to students, I always um, share with students that we're a small, to medium-sized liberal arts college with large university resources. So we're small enough to where you're not going to come to TCU and feel like a, just another number. Um, we actually put a cap on the number of students that we actually bring into our incoming um, first year class um, every single year. Um, that's just to ensure that um, our students are able to build those long lasting relationships with our faculty and staff. Um, but then also too, we're large enough to where if you're wanting that large state school feel, um, you could definitely get that um, here at TCU. So at TCU, we actually have a little bit up under 11,000 students on our campus with about 87% of our um, undergraduate population um, basically making up that number. So this number you see in front of you has actually grown just a tad bit at the moment. We currently have 9,704 students that uh, are a part of our undergraduate population at TCU. So we're very undergraduate focused and driven um, at the institution. Um, again, we are definitely located in Fort Worth, Texas, which is actually the 12th largest city um, in the country and also to the fourth largest metroplex um, in the country as well. So let's look at TCU as it relates to the sheer numbers of just the collegiate experience as a whole. Here at TCU, we actually have nine different academic colleges with eight of them been, being degree seeking. Overall, we have about 115 different majors uh, broken down into those eight different academic colleges. Um, the most popular programs that we have at TCU include our business program, our pre-med ma uh, pre majors, which actually um, sends our students off to medical school um, at about an 80% acceptance rate, which is actually twice or double the national average. And then also too, we actually have a direct entry nursing program as well. So that uh, those programs are very popular at TCU. Again, we're not limited to that, but if I'm looking through the lens of an admissions professional, those are the programs where we see the largest volume of applications every single year. Um, beyond the scope of that, we do require for our students to live on campus um, every single year. Um, although, you know, we uh, dealt with a pandemic that no one um, was prepared for last year, we actually brought in our largest incoming first year class last year. And what I can say is even during the pandemic, about 89% of our uh, first year students are currently on campus taking classes both in person and virtually as well. Um, the great thing that I love about TCU, just due to our sheer size, is that we can provide our students with the um, support that they need, um, both in and outside the classroom. So that's why we see a very high return of investment on students who are actually employed or go off to some professional program um, after um, college as well, mainly because we're smaller and we can provide our students with that um, attention that they need. So where are our students coming from? Great question. So our students are coming from both the great state of Texas and then also to the other great states outside of Texas at about a 50-50 um, you know, split. And that also includes our international population as well. 
Okay. So with all that being said, I definitely wanted to share with you a little bit more about the collegiate experience as well. We are a division one school um, and we're located in the big 12 conference. We're actually the smallest school in the big 12 conference, but we use that to our advantage to build that sense of pride and uh, community as it relates to being a TCU Horn Frog. We um, do not require for any of our students to um, actually purchase um, sports passes to go to any of our um, sporting events on campus. We do that as a means to encourage you to you know, get out of your dorm room and onto campus. So as it relates to things that you can do on campus, you know, there's a lot that you can do beyond the scope of just the collegiate experience as it relates to athletics. We have other opportunities um, as well, which include, you know, you actually participating in something that we call Frog Camp. We actually have another opportunity for you to get connected on campus as well as it relates to something that we call Frogs First as well. But as, we're, uh, as, we, as it relates to basically getting connected to TCU, um, we definitely want to um, make sure that you stay connected to us. Um, here is the contact information for both Mandy and myself. Um, but then we also too encourage for you to find us on social media at TCU Admission. Um, so we would just encourage for you to do that. Thank you so much. Um, we'll, we'll be with you for the rest of today. Have a great day and go Frogs. Great, thank you, Ray. Okay, if you have any questions for any of our presenters, feel free to uh, continue putting those in the Q&A. Uh, next, Park University wasn't able to join us this afternoon, so we will go to Savannah College of Art and Design next. Hi, everyone. My name is Mary Claire Engel. I am one of the assistant directors of admission for the Savannah College of Art and Design, otherwise known as SCAD. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Um, I've got a brief presentation I will share, and um, I hope to hear from you with questions. I'm driven to create, to be expressive, to collaborate with only the best and across disciplines. If you have an outlet like the arts where you can be in these other worlds and imagine anything, growing up in the arts, I've seen it change people's lives. There are things happening in our classrooms where students are actually reimagining their own education in the way that we communicate with each other. What is that next step for them? How are they going to make those contacts with their future employers? During my time at SCAD, what was so magical was that it was this hot pot of creative people from different types of majors that could influence each other. I would say my two greatest lessons that I learned from SCAD were learning the structure of the industry and, and the strong work ethic, but I think you really hone those skills at SCAD. I am the creative director of Christopher John Rogers. Growing up, I always knew that, I, that fashion was my passion. Ew, gross. Anyway. <laughs> I am the creative director of smart people who love creativity, fashion, design, art, film, telling their version of their own story. I am an artist. I am a performer. I'm an entrepreneur. Storyteller. Thanks to SCAD, my future as a creative professional is real. It's happening. You are the next incarnation of this beautiful planet that needs design, that needs beauty, that needs your mind and your spirit and your energy your power, your unique voice. Because you have something unique to say. This is Scott. Anyone who asks me about college in the US, all I say is, Scott, don't even think of anything else. So uh, we were founded in 1978, and for more than 40 creative years, we have grown to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world. We have locations in Savannah, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, Lacoste, France, and online via SCAD eLearning. 
We have approximately 15,000 students from all 50 states and over 100 countries. In fact, over 25% of SCAD student population is international. And we offer more programs of study and specialization than any other art and design university in the United States with over 100 degree programs across more than 40 majors and more than 75 minors. And career preparation really is at the heart of SCAD's mission as evidenced by our 99% um, job placement rate for our alumni. So 99% of our spring 2019 alumni were either employed, seeking further education or both within 10 months of graduation from SCAD with 91% um, in a creative field. So those numbers really are a testament to the quality of education you're gonna receive at SCAD um, as well as our talented and ambitious students. Um, so we've got alumni that are working in all of the creative industries that we offer. Um, and these are just a small selection of, um, of locations that our alumni are working at. Netflix, Chanel, Pixar, Apple, Spotify, um, as well as Instagram. SCAD set you up for success, hone in on what you're good at, make it great, and use everything that SCAD has to offer with it. SCAD is constantly staying very aware of industry trends and therefore kind of adapting curriculum to play into that and be able to have students be very prepared for real life after graduation. Just seeing the depth and the amount of detail the students put in and when you bring in people from all of those different disciplines together, it's really amazing what they can create. It really opens a lot of doors and a lot of opportunities become real possibilities here. What's different about SCAD is when they're setting the bar higher here, the student will really shine outside of this environment and the, the workplace. I wish I was back here as a student sometimes. <laughs> They've got all the facilities you need to do anything you dream of. The reaction to the name of the school definitely brings a smile. It's amazing how every time that I say SCAD, more and more people go, oh my God, you went to SCAD. There's drive, there's compassion, there's a willingness to take huge risks. I just don't know that it exists anywhere else. Because of SCAD, I got my dream job at Disney. Writing artist at Microsoft. 3M Healthcare. Porsche Cars North America. Gensler. Google. Google. Who's Netflix. You? IBM. Lenovo. Pixar Animation Studio. I'm going to be a product designer for Instagram. going to um, share this postcard with you guys um, here. Sorry, Susie, it just shared my screen over yours. We're running That's out of time if you're able okay. to wrap up here quickly. Okay, um, did it share my screen really quick? Yes, again? Yep. Okay. So just to give you some quick facts, here's our, here's our SCAD 101 postcard. Um, you can apply to SCAD as early as a high school junior. We do require your high school transcripts. We are test optional this year for the fall 21 quarter just due to everything that's been going on with COVID. Um, but moving forward, we may require the SAT or ACT scores again. Um, you are not required to submit a portfolio to be reviewed for admission, um, but I encourage you all to submit portfolios because if you submit a portfolio and a resume, you'll get reviewed for additional achievement scholarships. Um, so the requirements are that initial application, there is a $60 application fee and your high school transcript to be reviewed for admission. Um, and thank you so much. Great, thank you, Susie. Okay, next up we will go to Heston College. There we go, video wasn't coming up. Perfect, there you go. Uh -huh.
Let me share my screen here. I want to thank everybody for attending today. Um, and you should see our screen there. Um, well, with me today is, uh, my name is Charles Hostetler. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Heston College. Uh, and with me today is Alma Huerta, who is helping monitor uh, all of your questions. Uh, Heston College is a small private college, Christian college located in Heston, Kansas, which is just 30 minutes north of Wichita. Uh, we have an annual student en enrollment of about 380 students uh, with a nine to one faculty to teacher ratio. Heston offers nearly 52 year associate degree programs for transfer. And we also have two four year bachelor's degrees uh, in nursing and in aviation professional pilot, which are two of our most popular programs. Heston College is known for outstanding academic support for our students. Our student support services are located in the Access Lab. This lab serves as a place for students to study alone or in groups, connect with supportive faculty, uh, and meet with a tutor if they need it. All lab services, including tutoring, are free to our students. Because Heston is primarily a two-year college, students could take advantage of leadership opportunities as soon as they arrive on campus. They can start on an athletic team, star in a musical, serve as a resident or ministry assistant in the dorms, which are roles that are typically reserved for upperclassmen at larger colleges. Over 75% of Heston's student body is involved in extracurricular activities on campus. Among those are music, theater, uh, 12 varsity sports that participate in the highly competitive Kansas Jayhawk Community College Conference. Since many of our students are a long way from home, they tend to stay around on the weekends. And with this in mind, we offer a wide variety of campus activities, uh, including intramural sports, lip sync battle, bingo night, ice skating and bowling nights, just to name a few. Heston's annual tuition is very reasonable when compared to other schools. In fact, our total cost is around 20% lower than the national average for private colleges. Our financial average financial aid package is more than 24,000 and 99% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid. We offer academic scholarships based on high school GPA and ACT or SAT test scores. We also offer additional scholarships for some extracurricular activities, including varsity sports, performing arts, and our newly established quiz bowl. And I will say this year, uh, we are test optional for this coming fall. There are a lot of other things we'd love to tell you about Heston College, but our students can tell you what the Heston College experience means to them better than what I can. So here we go. As soon as I stepped on campus, I told myself, yeah, this this is the place and I, I can't explain it. We have people from different countries, people from different states in America, even people from other continents. So I think a two-year college offers you uh, ad advantages that, that four-year colleges don't. Having the chance to have a personal relation with my teachers and, and you know, having the opportunity to go see them in their office and, and really uh, go through the concepts that we've that we're dealing with is really helpful and and I think that has allowed me, allowed me to develop myself and grow a lot. I'll pass a professor on the sidewalk and they'll say, hey Aaron, how's the show going? How are you doing? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you are you doing okay? Let me know if you need any help. Let me know if you need anything. And I have really appreciated that. We get to know personally each of the students and the faculty and staff. I felt that I could make a lot of strong friendships and connections with professors and uh, with my peers. You can ask questions, you can be bold. It's, it's a lot of student leadership. That, that student leadership shows other students who aren't on there that they too can be a part of creating a space that is uh, a safe environment, um, a secure atmosphere for their voice and, and others who may feel that they may not have one. Being an exercise major, I was able to take an athletic training class and it threw me into opportunities I probably wouldn't be able to get as a freshman and sophomore anywhere else. Hessen is very unique in that way. 
I was able to job shadow during games, go into the athletic training room, and see a lot of different styles of rapping and practice those. I'm a biology major, but I also take part in numerous performing arts. I sing in bel canto, and I'm a theater scholar, and it's really nice to sort of have these opportunities um, to be involved in a number of different areas. People from different backgrounds and, and having different beliefs could just get together uh, as a community and, and you know, grow together and, and study together. It's nice to have people who care about you, I guess, make you feel like home when you first get here. And so I walk across campus, I'm able to interact with people from all around the world just walking across a small campus like Heston. And so I'm able to feel like everyone is welcomed here and belongs here, and that's really valuable. It's always a moving uh, community, and, and it embraces changes. Yeah, again, you should come visit this place and just see it and see the experience yourself, you know? At Hessen College, we focus on relationships and community. Our students come from 30 U.S. states and 25 different countries, which brings a global perspective that enriches our campus community. If you're looking for a small private college where you can get to know your teachers and fellow students, I hope you'll take a look at Heston College to see what we have to offer. We're holding classes in the classroom and we do offer in-person or virtual campus visits, whichever works best. Uh, you can call us at the number there or go to our website to uh, fill out an application. It's absolutely free uh, to schedule a visit or to contact us for more information. Uh, our motto is, at Heston College, you can start here and go everywhere. Uh, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we are going to go to Penn State University. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. We can't see you though. Okay, oh, I did it the wrong way then. Oh, let's see, didn't share. Can you see me now? Um, yes, we can. You're good now. Let me see. I think I have. Did that screen move? Uh, no, you're good. Okay, perfect. Um, sorry about that. Just a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Anna Fernandez, and I'm the admissions counselor for Penn State. Um, I mostly concentrate on the Midwest area. Uh, Penn State is a public institution that was founded in 1855, and it is located in central Pennsylvania. It has a total of undergraduate enrollment of over 76,000 students, but that's across our 20 campuses um, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, Penn State is also a top 1% uh, recently ranked um, by the Center for World University Rankings, not only for the quality of education that you'll receive here, but also for the many research opportunities available to students. Um, to give you a frame of, uh, frame of reference, um, that is 1% out of 18,000 universities across the globe. Penn State also offers a top-ranked career service office with a dedicated staff to help you find internships and provide you with services such as uh, resume workshops, mock interviews, uh, and even professional headshots to get you ready uh, for that very important interview. They also host um, the largest career fair, ESA Mississippi, twice a year in the fall and, and in the spring, and it is held at our Bryce Jordan Center. And here students have the opportunity to uh, be interviewed or to learn about 4,500 different um, employers who come to Penn State specifically to uh, interview and hire uh, Penn State students. Um, we have an 85% graduation rate and that's 30% above the national average. And we also have a 93% retention rate and that's 12% and that's 12 above the national average. Every year, thousands of students um, experience the world through academic programs, research, service, and internships abroad. With over 300 uh, study abroad programs in 54 different countries, uh, Penn State provides options that can fit your academic schedule, whether for a week, a semester, or for uh, the entire summer. 
Uh, Penn State is also um, one of the top uh, research institutions. We're a research one institution, which means we get significant funding to do research over a billion dollars that we receive. And that means that students can start doing research as early as their first year. Penn State also has a 16 to one uh, student to faculty ratio, especially when they get to those core uh, classes with their major. Now Penn State is unique in that we're part of a 20 campus system. And our campuses can range from the smallest, about 800 students, to our largest with 46,000 students, which would be our University Park campus, which is right here in the center with the red little house. Um, all of our campuses offer their own four-year degree should students want to stay at just one campus, or students can take advantage of Penn State's unique two plus two plan, where students can start uh, almost any degree for the first two years at one campus, and then transition over to finish their degree at another campus. Now, all of these campuses, they are all Penn State. So no matter where you start or where you finish, it's going to be one transcript, one degree, one university. If you look at the map, um, all of the campuses with the little monopoly houses represent campuses that have on-campus housing for students. And the ones with the circles, um, you can find housing um, uh, across the street, but it's not going to be uh, university owned. Now, Penn State has over 275 majors and over 185 minors with four year degrees offered. Like I said earlier about all of our 20 uh, undergraduate campuses and they're housed in 13 academic colleges, which you can see um, right here on your screen. Um, we also have um, what we call the Division of Undergraduate Studies for those students who are still a bit undecided and they don't know what they study. Um, they have two years to explore different options um, to figure out what they want to major in and then they can declare a major at the end of their second year. Um, our most popular colleges are going to be our nursing college, our college of engineering and our college of science. Penn State also has over 1,200 clubs and organizations that will keep you busy while you're here on campus. Um, I'll cross the 20 campuses that, that we have with over 900 alone on our um, University Park campus. Um, so we have, for example, intramural sports, um, club teams, we're also a D1 Big Ten uh, university. Um, we have a student-run um, newspaper. We have the largest student-run philanthropy. Um, we also have uh, 58 religious organizations and groups, including the uh, Pascarilla Spiritual Center, which happens to be the largest multi-faith center of its kind in the country. Now, to help you estimate the cost of attendance to come to Penn State, here are the numbers for the 2021 um, school year. Um, as you can see, you can see the rates for our University Park campus, which is our largest campus, and that's going to be the 47,000 number. Or you can see uh, what uh, the tuition is going to be for one of our other 19 campuses um, across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, the difference in price is going to be, it takes um, a different amounts of money to run a, a campus that's as large as 46,000. That way, the that's why the tuition is higher there. And it takes a little bit less of money to run a campus that has only 800 students. Um, so that's just a difference um, in tuition for you. Um, here, you're looking at our admissions timeline. Our application opens on August 1st. And November 1st is going to be an early action deadline. And that's going to be your best um, chance at admissions to your first choice campus. And it also means that you'll receive a non-binding decision by uh, December 24th. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. I have some links here that it might be of interest to you if you wanna reach out to me. I am the territory manager for the Midwest and you have um, all my contact information right there in the screen. And we would love to talk to you and show you around and talk more about all the great opportunities that a Penn State education can give you. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Okay, and I think I just saw that, um, let me see, I thought I saw that Park University had joined, but now I think they hopped off potentially. So 
I'm sorry if I'm missing you from Park, let me know. <laughs> um, but I think, I don't think you're on here anymore. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask all of our presenters, if you want to join me back on camera, I'm going to flip through here. We have about five minutes. So I'm going to kind of rapid fire some questions. You can each take, um, each institution can take about 30 seconds to answer them. So our first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we will start with Ryan from Lynn and go in that same order. All right, uh, now that I'm unmuted, it works. Uh, definitely take a look at as many schools um, as possible. If you can go visit the campuses, definitely makes a big difference, especially with some of the changes that have gone on in the last year um, and really try to connect with some of the students that are there. Um, that's, that's our biggest thing. When you come and visit, we wanna make sure we connect you with students, connect you with faculty and staff, really make sure that it's a good fit for you. If we accept you, we know you're gonna be a good fit for the university. Now we just wanna make sure that we can be a good fit for you. So that's, that would be my advice. Finally, make sure you have the right fit. I agree with Ryan. Um, my piece of advice would be to get connected um, to the university. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we are dealing with a space that we're not used to. So um, see about the different ways to get connected. You know, some schools may allow you to come, you know, some may, I know you're zoomed out, but there's other opportunities to get connected with the admission staff, um, as well as possibly the st current students um, as well. So I would definitely say um, build a relationship with the admissions office and allow them to be your resource that'll help you navigate the admissions process and learn more about their university. Um, I agree with both of you all getting to know um, admission staff, touring campuses, um, visit campus locations to learn more about the university, the environment, um, housing, student clubs, organizations, ways that you can get involved on campus. I also encourage you guys to do some career research, research career opportunities, um, jobs that you would be interested in pursuing and then research those universities you're considering and see if they offer programs that prepare you for those career paths. Um, certainly at SCAD, you can do daily tours. We have admission representatives that live all over the country that you can meet with with virtual one-on-one um, -on -one appointments. And we have faculty workshops and virtual faculty workshops. So if any of you guys are thinking about some creative careers, please feel free to get in touch with me. I can um, let you know about some virtual faculty workshops that, that showcase creative career paths and specific creative programs we offer. Yeah, it, uh, pretty much a consensus. Uh, visit if you can. Um, just, you know, you want it to be, uh, it's going to be your home for the next two to four years. So you want a place that feels comfortable to you, uh, that, uh, you know, that has what you're looking for in a college, whether it be a major, uh, extracurriculars, any of those things. Um, it, it really needs to be someplace that you feel like you fit in, that you feel at home. Uh, so that's, Pretty simple in a nutshell there, but uh, yeah. Well, um, I must agree with all the previous campuses with, with their advice as well. I would also say um, this is going to be the place for you. So make sure that you pick uh, the place that is right for you. Also think about um, financially, what would be uh, the best choice for you? Um, that's I know that's something that students don't tend to think about, but in terms of financial, um, not financial aid, but financially, which, which college would be um, better for you in terms of debt in the future. Um, another little thing, uh, please check your me emails. It's really, really important you check your emails and don't miss um, application deadlines. Um, that can have a huge significance um, in the admissions process. So that's my advice to them. Awesome, okay, I think we have time for one more question. So what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? I know some of you have mentioned these already, so feel free to expand or pick another one. Take about 30 seconds and we will start with Ryan again. All right, so I'll be quick. Um, we do something called Celebration of uh, Nations and Celebration of the Arts. One of them is celebrating all the different nationalities and things that we have on campus. So all of our different students can um, cook foods from their culture and we basically have a big festival celebrating this, our entire community. And in Celebration of the Arts, we do in the spring, which is um, something that celebrates all of the performing visual and um, and any pretty much any types of art, whether it's film and television, uh, we have students who do shorts, things like that. So really just kind of showcasing everything that our students can do. Um, it's open to all students. So we definitely want students from all different walks of life to come and join 
um, and showcase a little bit about them. I would say um, one of the most popular traditions at TCU is our Christmas tree lighting um, that we actually have um, at the end of the fall semester. Um, so basically we ship in this um, 40 foot tall tree um, and we actually have like a concert and fireworks and Super Frog Santa comes on the campus as well. And, um, you know, the community actually comes out too. So even if they're not associated with TCU, we have individuals from the community that bring their kids out and they write letters to Santa. We serve hot chocolate and refreshments. And it's just a really, really good transition from, you know, such a demanding semester into the holiday season. So we come um, onto campus, get connected, and then, you know, um, send everyone home. I would say at SCAD, we offer signature events, and these events really showcase different academic programs and the career, um, the industries that we prepare you for in those different careers and academic programs. So we do a SCAD Savannah Film Festival every fall where we bring in directors, producers, actors, actresses to showcase and talk with our students about the latest and greatest films um, we do an animation fest. Uh, we also have a fashion show every spring where our senior fashion students can showcase their work. So these are fun events for our students to go to each year um, with your friends, but they're educational as well because you're meeting people in these industries and you're learning more about what it's going to be like in these fields after you've graduated and are working in the industry. Um, and so, like I said, these are every single year that you can look forward to participating in, and they're sprinkled throughout the entire academic calendar. Yeah, um, Heston, here, there's, oh, oh, oh there's, sorry, I thought I guess <laughs> Heston comes before me. My bad. That's okay. There's there's actually three that come to mind. Um, one is at the beginning of each year, we uh, our dorms are are separated into what we call mods, um, and we have our what we call mod Olympics. Uh, it's just a great time uh, students to kind of get to know each other, a bunch of games and stuff like that. Uh, at Christmas time, we have our Feast of Carols, uh, which is kind of a winter formal um, that students can attend. And then um, one of the great ones is our Cultures Fair that we have, um, kind of like Lynn University, like Ryan said, uh, our, our people can uh, cook the different foods from their native countries. Uh, they wear the clothes and we often have some kind of a topic, whether it be like weddings, how they celebrate weddings in, in, in their culture or something else. So uh, it's, it's really a fun time to get to know students from all over. Okay, so here at Penn State, um, like I mentioned earlier, we're a D1 Big Ten University. So one of the big events is what we call our whiteout game. Um, so anytime one of our uh, competitors, whether it's Ohio State or Michigan State or University of Michigan come in to visit um, the whole stadium, 110,000 um, are wearing white and it gets really loud and everybody, all the alumni come into town and everybody looks forward um, to the whiteout game. So that's what we, one of the traditions that we really enjoy here at Penn State. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for sharing um, to our students. Thank you for joining us. We hope you learned some more information about these colleges that you are interested in. Um, when you close your Zoom room, there will be a link to a four question survey. If you don't mind taking a minute to fill that out, we'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. Don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered. So um, check the StriveScan website, for sign up for any additional sessions you might be interested in, as well as find the session recordings available there in about a week or so. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Oh, before I forget, we will be offering another virtual college fair similar to this one for you all um, in April. So keep an eye out for details coming your way soon about that. So thank you. Have a great afternoon and evening, and uh, we will talk to you soon.